I'm Tyler Austin from Gungnir Strategic. Thank you so much for watching. In this video, I'm going to talk about why shoot houses, probably even the majority of them, actually do a disservice to the students that train there. And I'm going to lead this with a question for you. What do you think is the biggest obstacle a team who is performing a clearance will face that they don't experience in most shoot houses? What do you think that is? I'll go ahead and answer this for you now. That thing is going to be furniture. Furniture is going to be one of the biggest obstacles a team is going to face that they usually don't experience in a shoot house. Why? Because most shoot houses and most rooms that are designed in shoot houses are completely empty. They are not furnished at all. And that really does a disservice to the people who train there, especially the more experienced guys who have the basics down. Because furniture really complicates rooms pretty significantly in most circumstances. And on top of that, what rooms, whether that is residential, especially residential, and even commercial are completely unfurnished. Unless you are clearing a house that was just freshly built and put on the market, the rooms are going to be furnished. Same thing with commercial buildings. Typically, you don't have rooms just to keep them empty. They're there to put things in and use them for certain activities, all right? So by their very nature, they're going to have furniture in them. And again, furniture very much complicates rooms in most situations and can lead a room that would otherwise be very simple to clear and work if it were empty and make it significantly more complicated to work. So with that being said, I'm gonna bring up some examples and I'm gonna show you what I mean and how furniture can greatly complicate a room. So let's take a very common room setup that you'll see in a shoot house. So here we have a very simple corner fed room that has a partition wall or a half wall at the very back, uh, back left hand side that creates dead space. Now, if you know what you're doing, this is a pretty simple room to clear. Attack the corner and clear the dead space created by that half wall. Again, if you know what you're doing, it's a pretty straightforward process. But this is a very common setup, room setup, that you'll see in a shoot house. So now let's take this same room setup and let's add furniture to it and let's see just how complicated things can get. All right, now we have the same exact room layout except we've added furniture to it. Now, you're gonna watch as these guys begin to work that door, just how much more complicated the room becomes when you add furniture. In this example, they're splitting the door, so let's go ahead and see what happens as they begin to work the room. All right, so let's go ahead and pause right there. So at this point, the number one man or the man on the strong side of the door has sliced out to his 90 degree and he even got an, into an engagement at the 90 degree. That in of itself actually greatly complicates this room. I'll talk about that here in a second. But at this point, we've pretty much got an entire picture of this room and you can see just how much more complicated this room became with furniture. And this is a fairly realistic room setup too. So not only do we have the hard corner and the dead space created by that partition wall, same as it was before with the unfurnished room, that's very typical that you would see in a shoot house, but on top of that we have low dead space created by that island and we have a little bit of dead space that is created by that piece of furniture, whatever that is on the right hand side of the wall that creates a little bit of dead space behind it. So this room has become significantly more complicated. On top of that, I actually had enemy AI in this example, and that AI happened to spawn and run um, behind that island. And when that number one man engaged him, he shot him and he fell behind the island, which is a big ass problem actually in this situation and, and, and complicates things pretty significantly because he engaged that person, he fell behind that island, you can no longer control that body or what you think is a body. You don't actually know if he's truly down or not because he fell behind that island and you can no longer see him and therefore control him. That actually creates quite a bit of a problem here and that is a very common thing. 
right? right? If you if you happen to engage someone, that body falls behind a piece of furniture or something else that conceals him, that's a problem because you can no longer control that body um, or what you think is a body. You can no longer control that person. How about that? I'll, I'll say it that way. This is actually a fairly common thing, um, and it's also pretty common, especially in a law enforcement context. You'll see cops do this a lot, where even if you don't engage that person, i.e. shoot them, if you got someone hiding or just standing behind a piece of furniture and you start giving them orders, whatever, police, let me see your hands, um, get down on the ground, get down on your knees, something like that, and that individual is behind a piece of furniture that creates low dead space, of course, a desk, a couch, or something like that, and that person complies with that officer and he gets down on his knees or prones out on the floor, all of a sudden that officer goes, oh, that wasn't a good idea because same thing happened. That dude complied with you, but by complying with you, you've lost control over that individual. So that actually happens pretty frequently. Um, either way, it was kind of a random tangent. But this happens a lot and this is a, another factor of how furniture greatly complicates situations and rooms. The fact that that body fell behind that low dead space is also going to change the procedures at the doorway uh, for these doormen. Um, but that's a different topic for another day. Anyways, let's go ahead and see how they actually deal with this. I'm not gonna really talk in great detail on how they're specifically dealing with this. You can kind of watch and see it anyways, but you can see how much more complicated it is with the furniture. So they go ahead, they continue to work the doorway, and eventually entry is going to be made. And you can see how they're dealing with all that dead space. Again, this room, just by the fact that it's furnished, just became three times more complicated than its unfurnished variant. So for teams that are unfamiliar or who have never trained in furnished rooms, this can be a huge shock and, and it can be task overloads and processing overloads because it's significantly more complicated and they've never been exposed to this kind of environment. And again, it can be a huge problem and it can be very dangerous because again, it's a training fallacy. Rooms are not empty. They're, well, rooms are very rarely empty. Let me put it to you that way. And furniture, again, creates a lot of dead space and can create a lot of different problems depending on what happens um, during that clearance, if you're dealing with people, etc. Furniture really complicates things. And again, it can be very, very problematic for teams who are not used to it and who have not trained in a proper environment, i.e. A, a training house, a shoot house that has a lot of furnished rooms. Now, I'm not saying that every room needs to be furnished, especially in the beginning, because when you're teaching new people the general principles of CQB, it's best to not have furnished rooms because it, it just leads to overcomplication and it just overwhelms the new people. So in order to teach them the basics of CQB, you really need to start with empty rooms and just teach them how to not only deal with the room itself, but deal with follow-on such as dead space, closed doors, open doors, etc. Now, although the principles and the procedures for clearing the dead space created by the furniture, all it is is anchored and unanchored dead space, and the principles of clearing that is the same as if the dead space was created by a wall. When you take students and you put them in a furnished room and they've never been exposed to that, they don't, they don't see it the same way. It complicates things, and although it's just fundamentally the same types of dead space that they're used to clearing when it was created by a wall, it's, it's, a, it's an overwhelming experience for them because they're not used to seeing that type of dead space created by furniture. And it uh, really stretches their processing, and they become very problematic, again, for teams who are not used to it. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'm Tyler Austin from Gungnir Strategic. Thank you so much for watching.